I did finally get hired at Kentucky Fried Chicken down the street. Yeah. <laughs> You're wooing for it because it's delicious, right? <laughs> I'm even getting fist pumps for it, yeah. I know it's good. Like, I'm vegan, and I will admit it. And the day that they make a vegan KFC, I'm there. I'm first in line because this stuff was delicious. Uh, I got a job there, and they, they put me on the drive through it was the first time anyone professionally gave me a microphone. <laughs> I lasted about five minutes. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, no, take that off. And I was like, they were laughing. They're like, that's not what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I disagreed with them on a few points. I was like, no, it is funny to wear it into the bathroom and hit the button and flush. It is funny. <laughs> They put me back on, on cooking. And uh, I, cooked, I cooked with a guy named Tony. I don't know if you guys have caught this yet, but I was a very sensitive, artistic kid. I wrote poetry. I listened to the Smiths. Tony was not such a sensitive kid. He was kind of brusque, as is evidenced by his name being Tony. Right? Because he could have been Antonio or Anthony. No, he chose Tony. What a brute. I didn't get along with Tony. I wanted to listen to the Smiths while I worked. I wanted to listen to Echo and the Bunny Man. I wanted to listen to The Cure. Tony wanted to listen to Metallica and other bands that sounded just like Metallica, but he swore they were different bands, but I'm pretty sure he just played Metallica all the time. 24-hour Metallica fest in the KFC kitchen. We fought a lot. I was a terrible employee. I would leave my station to run to the back anytime I got inspired to write down poetry. I have not changed. <laughs> Eventually they became punchlines instead of poems, but I should be wearing one of those suits with like corporate logos all over it right now of all the places that paid me to write this material <laughs> while I was supposed to be doing something for them. <laughs> Thank you, Blockbuster. Thank you, Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> so I come out of the, the back one day and, and I'm gonna warn you guys ahead of time that this is gonna get a little grisly, but hang in there, it'll be okay. I, I'm, do you, do you hear me? I'm promising you it's going to be okay. All right? Okay, I just really want to make sure we get that through because I come out of the back to, to where Tony is. Real quick lesson on why your chicken at Kentucky Fried Chicken is so delicious. You guys know that they deep pressure fry your chicken? They don't just deep fry it. They lock it in. Pressure so that all the greasy goodness just really gets pushed into every piece. And us cooks would have to release the pressure before we could open it. So you'd hit a button and something would come squirting out of there that could only be described as grease steam, which is a word that should not exist. <laughs> and which way did the grease steam spray? This way? No, it might damage the wall of the restaurant. Boom, right in the teenager's face. <laughs> so I come out from writing something, you know, surely very Robert Smith derivative. <laughs> And I see Tony standing over the bin of boiling hot grease with his middle finger in the grease. Yeah, up to here, just disappearing at that point. You guys got very quiet. And I had the same response. My brain right away did what your brains are doing right now. It went, what's the explanation for this? What's the explanation for this? Surely I'm not watching a teenager deep fry his finger. What is the explanation for this? I'm like, oh, it's not on. The grease isn't on. I look, it's bubbling and boiling and hissing. I go, did Tony have a prosthetic finger and he never told me before? <laughs> I don't think so. I said, Tony, oh my God, what on earth are you doing? And Tony laughs and he pulls his finger out, gives a little shaky shaky, and he holds it up for me. And I look and it's a horrible gnarled mess and I almost pass out. I've never passed out before. I came really close to passing out. The lights dimmed for a minute, I lost my balance. And then to make it worse, Tony reaches over and he pulls the burnt layer off and he, I told you it's gonna be okay. He <laughs> splats it on the ground. I look down at that. I barely keep my chicken littles in my stomach. <laughs> I look back up at him expecting to see, you know, like a bony finger with some gristle hanging off it. And what I see instead is like a perfectly normal teenager's middle finger with a little bit of a pink tint to it. And I say, Tony, Oh my God, how did you do that? <laughs> Teach me now, master. Tony says, it's easy, bro. 
and he walks me over to the batter that we put the chicken in, and he just dips his finger in, shakes it around, pulls it out, puts it in the flour with the 11 <laughs> secret herbs and spices, <laughs> flours it up. He says, now you've got a nice layer of insulation. <laughs> he goes over and he pops it in the grease. He says, you just hold it there until it's about as hot as you think you can take. And then you pull it out, shake off the excess, voila. <laughs> and I run over immediately and do two fingers because I got a one-up Tony. <laughs> and Tony and I became friends. <laughs> We bonded over the next month deep frying our flanges in the back kitchen of Kentucky Fried Chicken on Douglas Boulevard in Roseville, California. <laughs> and one day Tony's leaving and I stop him and I go, hey Tony, I, I want to talk to you, man. And Tony goes, what's up? And I go, hey man, I just want to tell you I really enjoyed working with you this last month and I, I feel like feel like we become friends, man. You're my friend. And he goes, thank you, Keith. That means a lot to me. You're my friend, too. But it's, that's not deep enough. It's deeper than that. And I say, Tony, here's the thing, man. I want you to know, uh, I even went out and bought a couple Metallica cassette tapes, and I've been listening to them at home. <laughs> and I, I really like Ride the Lightning, man. It's a dope album. <laughs> Which is teenage boy love, right there. <laughs> Tony's like... He says... That's cool, bro. Listen, man. And he looks around to make sure no one else can hear him. And he says, sometimes when you're not here, I put the Smiths on. If anyone comes in, I tell them that, that you left it on. But I like it, bro. I like it. <laughs> Morrissey's all right, man. That guy's all right. It feels. You know what I mean? It feels. So now we're besties, you know. And I say, Tony, one, one more thing before you go. You know, we're, we're becoming good friends. We're getting close. And I just, I think we both know where this is going. And I feel like it's time we just go ahead and take that jump, take this relationship to the next level. And Tony goes, bro? <laughs> and I go, Tony, tomorrow, I'm ready to fry my whole hand. <laughs> and Tony says, and this is an exact quote, bro, we're doing this. <laughs> Dude, I'm coming in early, and I'm getting everything set up. I was like, cool, I have a pit crew. <laughs> I come in the next day, and sure enough, Tony has double sifted the flour, triple whisked the batter. I put my flour and batter separate, told the other cooks, don't touch this. That's Keith's batter. It's Keith's flour. I'm like, sick, man. Dude's got my back. So I go in and we, we start doing our thing. We put down some French fries, we make some biscuits, whatever. And then comes a point and I say, hey, Tony, I think I'm ready. I think it's time to do this. Tony goes, you sure, man? You sure? And I go, now's as good as ever, man. Let's do it, bro. And then Tony, to my surprise, takes me by the wrist and gently walks me over <laughs> to the batter and then lowers my hand in for me. He kind of moves it around a little and he takes it out and he gets down on one knee and he like studies it, <laughs> looking for thick spots. And then he walks me over to the flower. He puts it in, he lovingly pats it on both sides, like, like the way those cooks on TV handle a chicken breast, you know, just so lovingly. Takes it out and again, I get a thorough inspection. I tell you, I, I have four brothers. I'm not used to this kind of personal attention. <laughs> And I like it. <laughs> and then Tony walks me over to the fryer. And like a father handing off the bride at her wedding, lets go of my wrist. <laughs> it's time for my hand to go and be its own thing in the world. <laughs> and I look, and, and there I am. I'm holding my right hand, a teenage boy's right hand, like his best friend in the world. <laughs> It's a clean set. <laughs> and I 
slowly start lowering it towards the grease. So I have this in my memory banks, first person memory of lowering my hand into a vat of boiling grease. Can't wait for that to kick back around during senility. You know? <laughs> How you doing, Grandpa? Did I ever tell you about the time I fried my hand? <laughs> okay, okay. Double the meds. <laughs> My hand goes in, it goes in all the way up to my wrist, and I'm looking down at my arm, ending right there, and then just seeing this bubbling, hissing grease. Tony did a good job, no thick spots, nothing bubbled off. Tony leans over and he whispers in my ear, don't let it get as hot as when there's one finger, because there's more surface area to keep heating up when you pull it out. And that's when I knew what love was. I followed his advice. I pull my hand up out of the grease. I shake it off so none drips down my arm because, you know, safety first. <laughs> then I hold my hand up. I mentioned to you that I'd written poetry. I, I also dabbled in painting. I was in a rock and roll band or two. I write. I'm a stand-up comedian. I've never created anything that came close to rivaling the beauty of this golden brown Kentucky fried hand. Original recipe. I looked at Tony and he wipes away a tear in his eye. And between me and Tony, we knew we knew that we had created a masterpiece and that this had to be shared with the world. <laughs> but here's the problem. This was the early 90s. Heck, this may have even been the late 80s. <laughs> there was no Instagram. There was no Twitter, no Facebook. Heck, taking a picture cost money. We didn't have any of those things. But we did have one thing. A dining room. <laughs> And that's when I hatch a plan. I'm going to grab my hand right below the wrist and I'm going to run screaming through the dining room. Ah! 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 Tony says, bro, people are going to puke. I said, puke? People are going to pass out, dude. I almost passed out. It was just your finger. Bodies are going to hit the floor. And this isn't us talking each other out of it. This is us getting pumped. So I do it, I get that wrist, I've got my apron on, I've got my cook's hat on, I go heading towards the corner into the dining room, as I come around that corner, what I see is a mostly empty dining room. Aww. Yeah, because we're idiots, but we're not idiots that are doing this during the lunch rush, you know? <laughs> I look and the, and the only people there are uh, two little girls and their father, probably recently divorced because he has his little girls out to fast food on a weeknight. <laughs> and, and his back is to me. But the two little girls and I lock eye to eye. <laughs> and what's worse than me walking around the corner with this Freddy Krueger monstrosity for a hand <laughs> is that I have a gigantic smile on my face. <laughs> And as I see their terrified little faces, my hilarious joke all of a sudden doesn't seem that funny anymore. <laughs> and I just go back into the kitchen, <laughs> which seemed like the right thing to do, but was totally not the right thing to do. Here, children, see my numbing gore <laughs> and a situation you can't explain. Now watch me disappear slowly back into the shadows. I know that no one will ever believe you that this happened. <laughs> I made an impression. <laughs> <laughs>